Hi everybody, welcome to another video on Watch and Learn. Um, sorry I've been away a little bit, I have been busy with other things. Um, to be fair, there hasn't really been that much content to update you on. I haven't really had my hands on anything significant, so, excuse me, so to speak. But welcome back to the channel. If you're new, uh, welcome. And if you are one of my subscribers anyway, then thanks for still being here and listening to me rattle on about something else. Um, Today I want to talk to you about an item, a product, it's called uh, G-ROM V-Line 2 Audio Visual Entertainment System. Basically, it's a glorified Android box. You know one of those things that you get, you can hook up to your TV? It's one of those, but it's an extortionate price because it gives you the luxury to be able to connect it to your onboard um, entertainment system in your car now depending on what car you drive make and model you may have a screen in the front of it and i know that g-rom actually uh, tailor this g-rom v-line device to various different makes and models of vehicles so for example i've got lexus is220d it has got a factory fitted satellite navigation system with a touch screen and reversing camera and all that jazz so this one works on my car obviously if you're driving a bmw with air vents and no satellite navigation or no screen then obviously this is going to be for you but if you are here and watching this video chances are you've already heard a bit about these devices and you're probably um thinking about buying one for your car okay so this is my car this is the head unit which is factory fitted it's come with a factory fitted sat nav it's got a reversing camera uh, steering wheel controls and um, it's got bluetooth audio as well to connect to your smartphone please excuse all the cables and stuff i've got chargers for vapors and batteries and i've got a dash cam up here which is recording and various things so excuse the cable mess i know it is a little bit of an ocd for some people i want to show you the device itself now first of all one of my major concerns before purchasing this item was actually the installation because even though there are a lot of different information guides online about installing it and everything i am by no means um sort of uh you know mechanically minded or i'm not good at wiring things up internally in vehicles not by a long shot so the other option of course is to take it to a mechanic and get them to wire it up but i've actually had a look on the internet and some people have because they don't know about this device i mean not everybody knows what this is so they're not sure where the cables are going to be routed so for example i've seen some people who put it in the passenger footwell and, and stuck it underneath the passenger footwell others have mounted it to the side which i think would look horrible others have put it under the driver's footwell um now for me if i were to take it to a mechanic and ask him to install it professionally with him not potentially knowing anything about this device or where the cables can be routed if you don't know where the cables can be routed how can you tell me for certain where you're going to end up installing it that's the thing so <laughs> I wasn't wanting to go to a mechanic and pay him like £100 or something to install it without actually knowing for sure whereabouts he was going to install it. Now, for example, if you store it under the passenger footwell, that's got to be a dumb idea because in the winter, if you turn on the heating, surely it's going to heat up the box and that can't be any good for the CPU or the processor um, or, you know, the overall health of the device. Secondly, I didn't want to put it to the side here because I think it's going to look clunky and it's going to make the car look worse than it is with all these damn wires everywhere anyway. So I bit the bullet and decided to buy it and install it myself. Um, when I did install it, luckily I managed to install it in the dashboard. Sorry, in the glove box, not the dashboard. This is the device itself. It's made of some sort of metal. Um, it's got an antenna here which I believe is for the radio, because it has got um, a radio on it, I think, I'm not sure. You've got some wires going in here. This is a microphone wire lead, and then you've got your audio um, visual, so that's for your screen. And then this is your power cable, which connects to the power in the back of your device, and that is for something else. I might have got it a bit mixed up. In fact, I think that one's for your 
that one's for your screen not sure not a mechanic don't quote me on it but anyway with a little bit of messing about it took me around about three hours what i managed to do was this this head unit you underneath all this crap you've got an ashtray you take that ashtray out there's a couple of little screws or bolts or whatever then you remove all this plastic crap here and then your head unit you take this vent out and you've got two bolts at the top two bolts at the bottom and this full head unit falls forward and then you get access to the back of it at that point i was lucky enough to discover at the top of my glove box there's a hole for something not sure what it was but i've ripped like there was a sort of entry what's the name of it now? it had a catch I undone the catch and there was a hole so luckily I found the hole don't normally have problems getting it in but <laughs> thankfully I never had any problems with this either so basically I routed the visual cable and the power cable through the hole to the back of the head unit and connected it to the back of the head unit now the installation guide which comes with this uh, with this device said to put it in a different hole in the back so the the port that it told you to put it in it didn't actually work so it took a while just putting the wire in different holes and hoping for the best so i managed to route the antenna for the gps just behind the door panel and tucked it inside the pillar and that is your gps module right there which has got some double-sided tape. I've just left it on the dash like that. And it, it sits there pretty fine because it's held in by the wire being tucked into the pillar. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me, I had a bit of a coughing fit there. Now, the microphone, I've managed to route up this pillar along the roof lining. And I've tucked it in the roof lining and the cap, there is a microphone there which is mounted right next to where my head is, obviously, when I'm driving. So that's the installation. Went off pretty well. Installed it all in the back, made sure it was working, put it all back together, and, um, yeah, tested it out. Okay, so once the hardware is all installed and up and running, it's time to test the software. So, just to let you all know, I have already pre-installed this and I've got it up and running how I want it to um, but in the initial beginning when you've installed it you'd obviously start the vehicle and on the front of your uh, screen you would get the splash screen saying V-line it's got a little steering wheel which will rotate which is an indicator that it's loading up after about a minute it does boot up and then you are presented with this screen which is the factory um, standard what they send with it user interface or operating system they call this operating system dashlink okay so that's the launcher that you get which is already in the system when you start it up now we'll talk a bit more about this later on for me it's a little bit clunky it doesn't look the most um, pleasing on the eye and i don't really like it but it is a simplistic design which I suppose is there for giving you the, the ability to quickly and easily navigate the screen while you're driving. So if you want to go from listening to radio onto your sat-nav, obviously these are big buttons which are going to enable you to do it with a lot more ease than you would if they were smaller. However, please be aware you don't get these apps pre-installed so there's no YouTube, there's no Google Chrome, there's no Play Store. What you will have in the beginning are these apps, Web Radio, Bluetooth, Spotify and if we go across you've got your files and you've got your settings. So what you'd need to do, what I did in the first beginning is you go to settings and you want to go to your network and your internet and obviously you can't do much on this device unless it's connected to the internet so you go onto your Wi-Fi I'm currently connected to my mobile smartphone via a portable Wi-Fi hotspot I've got unlimited data with my plan so for me it's not a problem on the other hand for you if you haven't got access to unlimited data maybe you'd want to include yourself on a plan that does 
or you could buy a portable Wi-Fi hotspot dongle which they sell or you could just use it and connect to public Wi-Fi if you're in the range uh, of one in a public car park etc hotel ground I don't know but anyway you need internet for this basically to work in all its glory so once you've got your Wi-Fi up and running you can go back and the second thing that you need to do is enable Google Play services this essentially won't do much without Google Play services so if you want the ability to run things like YouTube and Google Maps what you need to do is go into users and accounts I'm not going to go into mine because there's some personal details on there and you set up an account now it's completely up to you if you want to use an existing account that you use for personal use but please be aware that while you're actually driving you may get notifications that pop up on the stop bar there the top bar which will have personal information about personal emails and stuff like that now if you're if you've got a passenger in the passenger seat and you don't want them to read your personal emails then I'd suggest to do what I did which is just make up a brand new email address a brand new Google account specifically for the car so now I have the car has got its own email address and its own YouTube uh, Google account sorry so I've just called it Lexus and there's a email address attached to it etc and that just works for the purpose of being able to download Google Play services and uh, to run apps like uh, YouTube, Google Maps, etc. as I said. Now, another thing that I did straight away is I went to System, and I went down to the bottom, and I went to System Update. Now, if you click on the System Update, it checks for updates. When I checked mine for updates, when I first booted the system, there were two updates which needed to be installed. One is a software update, one is a firmware update. I had problems with both of these updates so I tried to do an over-the-air update I was connected to Wi-Fi it was home Wi-Fi fiber connection very fast I clicked on the download firmware update option it downloaded the firmware then it restarted the system and when the system came back online it just had black lines through the screen and in all truth I thought I'd brick the system now that wasn't a very good start for a £500 piece of kit. However, I went onto the website, I managed to download a file which I then put onto a USB thumb drive, connected it physically to the device in the glove box and I followed some of the instructions on the website and I managed to bring this back to life. Then I tried to update it again over the air, the second time I tried everything went fine and as you can see now I'm currently running Android 8.1 and I've got the latest updates installed on the system. So once your device is up to date and you've got your system updated and you've downloaded um, your Google Play services and you've added a Google account then the next thing you'll want to do is obviously go back to that big clunky screen and uh, if we go to the left you'll be able to see the Play Store. Go into the Play Store and then you have the option to download any of the apps that are in the Play Store or if you are like me you go onto the internet and you can download some APKs which is what this is so this app gives me the ability to watch live net TV so you can watch uh, terrestrial channels you can watch live sports TV etc etc it's a really good app and it works very well for me now let's go back to what I was saying about this user interface this is the user interface that you're going to get straight out of the box this is what you're going to be able to use initially however guys if you don't like the idea of having two banks of four icons on one page and two banks of four icons on the other it is pretty easy to use you just basically press and hold and then sorry if I press and hold you'll be um, you'll be displayed with some different shortcuts plugins apps you just choose which app you want to associate once you've chose it go back and that app will then be there so you've got your settings your files and on here you've got your you know your YouTube and your live net TV now I personally think if you look at it it just looks a little bit out of date I'm not too happy with that user interface you actually call it a launcher so the launcher on this I wasn't too happy with but thankfully there are other options out there specifically the one I chose is called the Agama car launcher so on the left hand side you've got a bar which is obviously your shortcut items this circle denotes the option to go back to your home screen depending on which launcher you've got so because my 
default launcher is now the Agama car launcher. When I go back to my home screen, it'll bring up the Agama car launcher, which is what you can see in front of you right now. Now, the best thing about this, it is absolutely fully customizable. The colors you see, the background, even this little icon here, you can change it. I've currently got an analog clock. If you want, you could have the logo of your car brand make. And if you want to, you can go back. You can even have a compass. Or if you want to, you can have a satellite navigation. So when your navigation settings are inputted, it will show you to turn left, turn right, straight ahead, 300 yards junction, go across the roundabout, blah, blah, blah. You understand, you get the picture. For me personally, I like to have the clock animation so sorry that isn't the clock animation is it that's that's the speedometer or the accelerometer so you'll be able to see that's your speedo basically you can see what speed you're doing personally i like the clock animation so when i'm stationary the car displays this analog clock and at the top you've got a digital clock now when the st when the car starts moving you'll actually that will change to an accelerometer so then you'll see or a speedometer sorry i keep getting mixed up you will then see a speedo on your screen which is run by a GPS and that will tell you how fast you're going and then again when you come to a stop it will automatically switch to this and you'll have your analog clock but again this is fully customizable you can do what you want with it it's up to you if you click the settings cog right here you can choose your car make you've got your theme editor so you can change the color the background the texture um, basically anything that you like You've also got your icons on the top left and right, so it's displaying Wi-Fi and GPS. That'll tell me the signal I've got at the minute. I've got the weather, which is connected to my local um, locality, which is in Doncaster. You've got your quick button. I've got Google Voice Search, your volume. You get the basic idea. Your controls, you can, you can, you can customise everything from here. Obviously, in the UK, our units of measurement are in miles per hour. In America, I think they use kilometers, and our temperature over here we use degrees Celsius. I think Americans use Fahrenheit, um, and so basically that enables you just to customize it to whatever you want. That that to customize the car launcher itself. That's the Agama car launcher. Um, so now I want to talk to you a little bit more about the actual apps themselves and how you can link them to this car launcher. So once you've got your apps downloaded that you want to download, you've got then this interface which has got three shortcuts on the left and three shortcuts on the right. Very easy to use. Basically, if you long click the shortcut, you can then link an icon. So that'll give you a music icon. It'll be a disc or something. The name, obviously I've set it to music. And you can associate it to an app. It's any app that you want to associate it to. Now, even though this says music, I personally have got this associated with YouTube because I do listen to music on YouTube and you can watch the videos at the same time, obviously, if it's safe to do so. So, for example, if I click on music, it'll take me onto YouTube. This is my channel, which you're on right now if you're watching this video. Just to give you an example, if I click on a video, you can see that YouTube is working fine. Here's me demonstrating some obliterate to get off some gunk from a door. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, you can use the touch screen to navigate. You've got a bar at the bottom. You can go left, you can go right. Um, and you can also use the volume. Um, this was quite an instant result for me. And you can hear me talking in the background. Now, the volume, if I go off of this, whoops, can be a bit fiddly. There you go, download, let's get it minimised, and then we can click off that. So, that is, um, that's YouTube, obviously. If I go back, I can go to navigation. If I click navigation, I've got it automatically set up for uh, Google Maps. Now, if I wanted to do that another way, I've got a quick button here. I can either press that button, and so, for example, if I press the button, what's the weather like in London today? Tonight's forecast for London is 18 degrees and partly cloudy. Great. So then if I want to go back. Now obviously because I've got a mic set up with this, I don't have to press that button. I can just say, OK Google, navigate to the nearest McDonald's. Navigating to McDonald's. This will then automatically find the closest McDonald's for you. Simplistic Google Assistant search. 
you don't have to press anything else it'll start the navigation and you're ready to go step by step guidance so just as you'd expect on a high-end latest smartphone this provides you with everything that Android has to offer in the form of obviously um, this box that you're using so you can see why I prefer this car launcher this Agama car launcher I think it's really nice looking it works very well you can go on to Google Chrome as you can see here I've been downloading some um, apps and APKs and obviously if you go to live sports and TV you've got your options like you can watch channels from all across the world I use this app I think it's very good if I click on link to for example Sky Super Sports News ending. and finally finished at 7.30 and he's got it and won the World Cup by the barest of margins and we've just found out that England have won the World Cup <laughs> brilliant we finally won a World Cup at something so anyway this all works pretty well it's pretty seamless guys I apologize for the camera it's not the best it does keep shifting the focus which is pretty annoying it's even annoying me um, but anyway you get a gist of how this works now the next thing I want to talk to you about is the compatibility one of the main selling points for this unit is the ability that it lets you um, use all of the factory functions of your vehicle so if we just zoom out a little bit now if I put my car into reverse you look at the screen and you can see I've got my factory reversing camera there which I can use to reverse when I take it out of reverse and put it back into neutral it will go to a black screen but worry not just press the audio button and you'll come straight back to it now if I use my buttons here you can increase the volume you can decrease the volume if I'm watching a video on YouTube I can I can click these to go to the next video or the last video if I'm making a phone call unfortunately these don't work but your standard factory fitted Bluetooth will connect to your device and you, you can still use so for example if I click the uh, call button it'll bring up my Bluetooth is connected so I can make a call on here and it will still route it through your infotainment system and again if you want to get rid of that you go to audio and you're straight back to your uh, you're straight back to your car launcher so that's how it works in compatibility with apps that's a little shortcut um, this is your shortcut sorry and this is just a brief overview of how those shortcuts work and everything works pretty well in my opinion now one of the very important thing that I want to talk to you about is the safety features on this device or should I say the lack of it now this is one very much up to you as a person how you are and what you decide to do I've heard some people say that they would love to have the ability that they've got the kids in the passenger seat and they'd like to have the ability to put on a YouTube video and while they're driving they can keep the kids entertained by watching the YouTube video now obviously I wouldn't recommend this to anyone it is illegal to watch videos while you're driving um, but you can do it it is it is possible so if you're driving along right now you can be watching a video while this is happening all right now like I said I don't recommend it when I watch videos in here I'm normally parked up with the handbrake on if I'm at a shopping center and I'm waiting for someone to do some shopping or if I'm at home and I just want to chill out in the car with some aircon on and watch some videos I will do that however if you've got a music video playing in the background and you want to drive without being distracted very simple on this car you press the display icon you press the screen off if I can touch it and you can still listen to the audio uh, possession so this will work with you can hear my annoying little voice in the background there and if you want the if you want the uh, visual visuals to come back you just press the audio button and it comes back on and again you can see my channel playing in the background so let's get rid of that I just wanted to let you know about that so don't worry if you're driving and you want to listen to some music on YouTube you can disable the screen and drive perfectly legally with the music playing in the background but no video playing on the screen so that's fine so guys there you have it that was the G-ROM V-Line 2 infotainment system Android integration for your car now depending on the make and model of your car there may or may not be one of these which is compatible you'd have to go onto the G-ROM website check the compatibility obviously always do your research check different internet forums check out the YouTube videos and make a more informed decision before you make this purchase 
So my overall conclusion is that would I buy this again? Yes, I would. Do I think it's value for money? Not really in the sense that for me it is an Android box, but the people that have made it have given you the ability to connect it to your car and still be able to use the functions and controls that you've got factory fitted without compromising anything at all. So for that alone, they've cornered a niche of the market and that's why they're charging a premium. So for 500 and plus quid, you can own one of these boxes. But in real life terms, it is really just an Android box that you would plug into your TV. But instead of your TV connectivity, this one is designed specifically for your car. So with that said, value for money, I don't think so. But is there anything else like this on the market which is going to give you the ease of use or the connectivity without any of the hardware or software issues that you would get with other aftermarket units? I don't think there is any other on the market. So I would buy it again. I'd recommend, would I recommend you to buy it? Well, that depends on you. Not everybody is fortunate enough to have a spare 500 quid lying around just to spend on something that they can essentially do on their phone. But if you have got the extra bit of spare money and you're not going to miss it and you do want to bring up your car into the 21st century, make it feel a bit more modern, give you that entertainment factor that you might not necessarily have, then absolutely. I'd buy it again. I don't have any problems with it. I think it is a very, very good unit. It enables me to do all the things I want to do with it. Um, bearing in mind, there is a G-ROM V-Line 1, which was the original. When I first heard about that a couple of years ago, my, my plans were to buy that. But I thought, I'll wait a year or two and the price will come down. But G-ROM, being the savvy bastards that they are, the year or two later, instead of bringing the price down on the original, they just brought an upgraded model out and kept the same price point. So I didn't save any money, but I lost out on two years of entertainment. So in the end, I just bit the bullet and I bought the thing. I'm happy with it. The installation was easy. I'm by no way uh, an auto electrician. I don't know anything about cars in that respect. But I managed to get it up and running and I managed to get it installed very nicely. I think that the... Uh, peripherals I put in some reasonable places, the microphones where I want it, the GPS antennas where I want it. The performance of the GPS and the sat nav is flawless, it knows exactly where I am and it navigates without hindrance. The microphone picks up everything I'm saying, it works very well. So I can only recommend it on those caveats of if you're willing to part with that amount of money for what it is, because it is just an Android box. But it does work great. Um, other than that, I can't really think of anything else. Obviously, the little niggles that I have had with it, sometimes it doesn't always boot up um, rightly, but if you turn the car off, give it 10 minutes and turn it back on, everything irons itself out. Alternatively, unplug the power cable from the box and plug it back in, and everything boots up again as it should. Um, other than that, it's fine. Also, if you had like games on here, you could download, for example, Pop G or a car racing game for Android. You could go on eBay, buy yourself a Bluetooth wireless controller. You could actually give your kid the wireless controller or yourself and sit there and play the Android game on your car screen with a wireless controller if you wanted to. So for functionality, the cool factor and just the entertainment, fantastic. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I know there's a lot more videos like this on the internet with this subject matter in tow but i don't think you can ever have too much information about something especially if you want to make an informed decision about purchasing something before you part it with your cash guys this is watch and learn thanks very much for watching i'll have some new content for you as soon as i can get it out and uh, click the subscribe button you'll be updated as soon as that you get the uh, notification you'll know when i've uploaded something new all the best god bless and i'll see you next time